This is the legendary Manoi. Or a star is bored. <laughs> Explain your favorite piece of equipment and why it's your favorite. That's an easy one. Actually, there are two now. But the very first, my very first piece was the, my, f yeah, the Sony Walkman Pro cassette recorder, uh, which is still my favorite piece. I real, I could not live without it. I mean, I record everything on it and I make my master tapes on it and, you know, it's just a uh, portable gives a professional sound to everything you record even when you don't want it you can't distort it it's wonderful well you can distort it if you try real hard like the batteries may be low or something but otherwise it's you know it's cool but uh, my, uh, my next favorite piece would be my uh, and I've only had this to go out a couple of years now. Before that time, I always used the Radio Shack uh, Stereo Reverb, because that's all I could afford. And that's how I got my famous name for my famous spatial qualities in my sound. <clears throat> it was just a bunch of Radio Shack Reverb, now that you know, aren't you about to puke? Uh, and then I got real ritzy and uh, looked through a Sam Ash discontinued catalog and got a Yamaha R100 reverb processor with 66 damn settings. God, it take me five, seven years to figure that out. But I've started using that and my space has got even bigger, man. I have a really big space around me, you know. It's like, it's like f further away than cool. What does one and a half IPS really mean to you? Well, what it really means to me is about how far 19 year olds can ejaculate. No, I don't make a bunch of noise, because I, you know, I circuit it all through my headphones when I mix, and so, you know, it's a completely silent affair, except when I'm recording, like, guitar or something, and, and then the windows are closed, and I live in a house, and it's, you know, they can't hear nothing, they think it's a dog, plus they all think I'm really weird anyway, and are afraid of me, so, you know, they don't bother me, they know not to fool with Manoi. Where do you home record? This is a joke question. Where, why do you think I home record in my home, stupid? Well, where do you, excuse me, where do you home record? In a motel? As far as my mixing studio and mastering studio, it's just a little, a it's three card tables in the corner of my bedroom because, you know, it's closest to bed. When I get up and go to bed, I can just plop right in a chair and start mixing. Hey, that's how I do so many tapes. How did you think I did so many tapes anyway? How did you start home taping? Um, 1984, when the equipment was, no, 82, I beg your pardon, 82. When the equipment became available, I got like a you know a nice double stereo cassette so I could make my own copies and send them out, you know. And then soon after that, I got the Sony Walkman Pro so I could do like a really good master and then put it in the double cassette recorder and then make uh, uh, copies to be sent out that were conformed, you know, everything was the same on each tape that I sent out. Before that, they were all different, you know, which sort of got some people confused. That's not my problem. By the summer of 84, I was making master tapes and figuring what to do with them, and I had been reading OP magazine from uh, Olympia, Washington, and uh, I sent in it. They had a, like a cassette 
page of reviews or news, and uh, this was with Robin James, and I sent in uh, my first release, which was called A Place of Shades. It was reviewed in the very last issue of OP in, like, I think, December 1984. Uh, what percentage of your music do you actually release? Well, since I released so much, everybody thinks I release everything I put out, but I don't. It's, you know, I mean, they think I release everything I record, but I don't. I'd say about 75%. I have two favorite films, uh, Ingmar Bergman's Persona and Andre Tarkovsky's uh, Nostalgia. Uh, what do you do to make money? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking home tapers this question? Is this not a personal question? <laughs> what do you think? We fake it, you know? Uh, well, uh, for me, Minoy, the legendary superstar of home taping, I, uh, in Los Angeles, capital of the world, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> what do you do to make money? I'm not sure I can talk about this. Uh, uh, no, I won't, no, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that part, no. I'm not going to talk about the video camera, no, 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 no. Um, um. Well, truthfully, for seven years, I've, uh, I've uh, gotten very depressed and made the government pay for it. Hey, this is L.A. You mean you think we people play records out here? What is your problem? Nobody plays. They don't even sell records out here. God. <laughs> Well, I do have a few old vinyl things left to remind me of the good old days. It's probably Magical Mystery Tour, the American version release on LP vinyl. Uh, by the Beatles. Yeah, that obscure English group. Um... There are probably some others too, but I'm, I'm, that one's probably pretty worn out because I've just played that so much, you know. That was like really, and still is, one of my, probably my favorite Beatles album. Better, I think, than Sgt. Pepper. Uh, largely because we are the walrus. We are the walrus? I am the walrus. I guess we could be the walrus. I don't know. Hey, I'm sick. What do you want? Also, I, I probably some of the early David Bowie stuff, like Hunky Dory and Ziggy and uh, Station to Station by David Bowie, I know is worn down to the grooves it pretends to play. Yes. 